Welcome back, friends and family, to another episode of Progress Report. This is episode number 12. We are in week 12 of the Nomadic release, which is makes this part 12 of the Nomadic saga within the Progress Report. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Nomad Triple Two, also known as Just Nomad, the Oost Triple Deuce, also known as Damon. I'm a performer, I make music, I produce events, I create content, but most importantly, I'm a father of four. Um, and for the past 12 weeks, I've been rolling out an album of mine called The Nomadic Deluxe, which is the reason why we started this whole series. So every week I was just giving an update to how my analytics are looking, whether that's the Spotify data, Apple Music data, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all of that stuff, and just keeping a documented uh, visual explanation of how it's all going over time as I release each track. So I'm following a waterfall release format. If you guys don't know what that is, that means that every single week, instead of dropping the entire project all at once, I'm dropping one song per week on every Friday onto all streaming platforms. So every Friday on Spotify, you'll get a new song from the project until the entire project is out. And then you get the whole project at the end of the 17 weeks. So we're now in week 12. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five weeks left within this album rollout. And then we start to look to next year and uh, all the new songs that we've been working on to put out, uh, which is very exciting. But we, we have some goals that we've set with this release plan. Obviously, that they're not goals that we were 100%, you know, we don't have to absolutely reach those goals. Any success, any growth in any of these metrics or stats is still progress. Um, and that's the main thing to keep in mind. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it and how this week looked. So as usual, we always start with the Spotify monthly listeners under the impression Oh, with with the knowledge that we're trying to aim for 4 million monthly listeners and we also started at 51 monthly listeners so that's quite a big gap there to try and achieve but with that being said last week we dipped in Spotify monthly listeners because we sort of hit a plateau and we were talking about how that plateau sort of centers around you know we're still trying to break into new markets we're still trying to engage new audience and you know, build up our community of, of like-minded individuals. Um, so of course we're going to hit a ceiling at some point. So now it's about how we break through that ceiling, All right? So we were at 418 last week after being at 434 two weeks ago. I'm happy to announce this week we hit 625, which is the biggest jump that we've had in this entire 12 week period. You know, we, we went from 51 to 73, 73 to 139. But this past week, we went from 418 monthly listeners to 625. And I have to be honest, I was not very active on the socials this past week. I've been pretty burnt out. I think I let you guys know about that in the last episode. Um, so admittedly, I wasn't putting in as much effort on top of the scheduled posts that we already had. So for those of you who are new to the channel, I created a bunch of content that's just, you know, basic somewhat mediocre content that I could schedule so that I have seven days worth of content each week of this release, right? So every single day of this release plan for 17 weeks, there's at least one post going out every single day. And this past week, I've been pretty lazy on doing anything on top of that. So I have my buffer, which is one daily post. That's just a buffer so that I can, you know, make sure that I'm consistent on the social medias without having to put in any extra effort. But for the most part, I've been pretty good at doubling down and putting out some extra content um, every day for the past 11, for the first 11 weeks. But last week, man, I was, I was honestly just, just really feeling it. And I kind of just had to, had to sit back and leave it on autopilot for a little bit. And with that being said, you know, Yes Sir was the song that came out last week. Um, and for some reason it, it resonated because now we've got 625 Spotify monthly listeners. So shout out to everyone who's been running that up. Um, our Spotify total streams jumped from 9,331 to 9,952. And that's just, you know, for the past 12 months. So that's, that's cool. Uh, Spotify followers, uh, we gained one new follower, which is cool. 196 to 197 if you guys know three people hit them up and tell them to follow me real quick because look how close we are to, to 200 let's just get let's just get past there and then we've hit 
you know, 200 from 173 followers earlier this year. But we can end the year with over 200 followers. That'd be cool, you know. Um, any milestones, even the little ones, should be celebrated. Uh, Spotify playlist ads. Let's remember, in week one, we had 280 playlist ads. Now in week 12, we're at 625. So that's cool. I've already tripled that. Uh, I think that's, yeah, triple, tripled that. Um, so that's cool. Apple Music Daily listeners. Uh, still at two daily listeners, which is cool. Still at 7,900 Apple Music streams. Um, Apple Music is obviously a difficult one. We've explained that in past previous episodes. So if you guys want to go back and watch that, that's cool. Um, Instagram followers, we lost some followers. We lost three followers. So we, we were at 4,069 and now we're at 4,066. But our engagement rate went up. So we were at 1.67% to 1.78% on Instagram, which is, again, quite difficult. Because it just, it's just telling you what percentage of all of the views that you get on your posts and uh, how, how many of those views are actually, you know, interacted with. So whether that's a like, a comment or a share or something like that. So I'm getting a bunch of views, not as many interactions. So I don't know what's going on there, Instagram. Instagram is the platform where, you know, you're following the people who follow you, you know, consistently that's where they're supposed to be so if you guys are following me consistently and just you know watching my stuff and then not liking it what's going on there like just leave this <laughs> we you don't need to be here it's cool i won't get offended by it just just bounce all right and then make space for people that do want to be here and do want to interact with it but anyway tiktok followers we got two new followers in the past week. Not the biggest jump that we've seen on TikTok, but still 5,334 to 5,336. Still cool. Um, TikTok post engagement rate went up. So we were at 6.28%. S still not huge, but way better than what we're getting on Instagram. So thank you to everyone who's engaging with the content on TikTok, leaving comments, likes, sharing it saving it as well save saves have been pretty cool this past week on tiktok so that's that's awesome shout out to all the tiktokers out there who are um you know keeping up to date with what we're building here uh youtube subscribers we are at 491 guys we're so close to 500 and 500 is the bare minimum you know milestone it's it's one of the two milestones that we need to hit to be able to monetize the channel the other the other one is kind of it's, it's a little bit out of reach at the moment it's got to do with views but our views are steadily increasing every single week and it's you know it's becoming this big thing but the subscribers we are so close to it if we can just get nine more subscribers if you guys know nine more people tell them to subscribe to the channel let's just get past that first milestone we'll worry about the views later um but that's cool anyway uh the engagement rate on youtube has been pretty tough um we've had our lowest in the past four weeks uh so we're at 0.41 percent on youtube so again that whole thing about you know why are you guys watching and not interacting you know what i mean like if you're, if you're gonna watch at least leave a like if you're gonna watch at least leave a like or a dislike at least that's still a, that's still an interaction um and then at at the at the most you know just a couple more clicks comment something uh share it whatever but just come on come on guys we're so close but that's the statistics that's the statistics for this week um week 12 i can't believe it it's already been it's already been three months since we started releasing the album again um and we got five five weeks left in this whole thing and i, I gotta say um i'm a little bit nervous because behind the scenes we've been working on a bunch of new music for next year um in terms of where we're at we're still quite behind in terms of our goals like you know i had a bunch of goals i wanted to have 12 months worth of songs ready for next year so that uh by november so that i can start you know planning out content and then get a buffer for that content so that you know you know that whole thing that i was saying about having a buffer for posts um for next year so i want a 365 days worth of daily content that i can keep posting regularly so i don't have to so I can, you know, take the pressure off of having to be a consistent poster in real time. You know what I mean? So scheduling posts in advance has become a big thing for me. It's been a big part of my process and big reason why we're seeing the growth that we are over the past couple of weeks. Um, 
But in saying that, I'm not too stressed out about how, like, how far behind we are because we're not really that far behind. We're we're getting pretty close. Um, as well, like, if you guys are hearing my voice right now, it's because I've been, you know, filming a bunch of content and, you know, trying to rap and shit like that. But, um, yeah. So that's that's how next year is looking, right? Um, in saying that, uh, I have three singles ready distributed like actually set and ready to release for next year um in january so i have two singles dropping in january and one single dropping uh in february and those are the confirmed singles right so uh, the first single that i've got dropping next year is on the 3rd of january i've got a song called proud of me dropping um on all platforms it's produced by levi uh, you know, uh, mixed and mastered by uh, Tahan, Tahan Stone. Um, uh, mixed, co-mixed with Levi and Tahan. Um, I gotta, I gotta make that distinction. They've been very clear about it. But um, those, those dudes, man, we've been working pretty hard the past couple of weeks to, um, you know, get get these singles finished. And a lot of them are in their final stages. Uh, the other one that I have dropping in January is dropping on the 17th. It's called More Than a Game. Uh, produced by Iconic Beats. Um, and just those two singles there, um, Proud of Me and More Than a Game. What I'm trying to do next year is drop two singles every single month, but have them sit in two distinct lanes. So Proud of Me, for example, sits in a category that I've called rent free, right? And, you know, it's kind of that play on words where it's like, you know, for, for freestyles or for, you know, singles that play up uh singles that i've written that come from a place of you know they're living rent free in my head um and topics of discussion things it's it's that sort of music where i can be a little bit more um in my rapper bag where i can be a little bit more lyrical where i can be a little bit more message based right and it's also you know that play on words where it's rent free where that's ultimately the dream to be living rent free right and and free of you know, having to, to pay something and that's why we're what, why I'm on this journey to try and monetize my music so I can do what I love for free, right? Um, oh, so I can do what I love and keep a roof over my family's head, right? I've, I've explained that before. So that's one category, rent free, proud of me sits in that sort of category. And the second category um, where more than a game would sit is called shoot and score. And that's another play on words where it's like, you know, we're creating music that you can shoot a film to and and score it to and and or the the song could be the score but it's also that play on words in a, in a sports sense where you know shoot and score we're, we're making music that fits that sort of feel where it's 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 theatrical it's um atmospheric it, it's part of that atmosphere of like you know this is the this is the type of song you want to lift some weights to this is the type of song you want to go shoot some hoops uh play some rugby play some football play some you know gridiron all of, all of that kind of stuff so that's the kind of music that we're playing there it's more to do with like you know sync opportunities you know chances like the sort of songs that just have a certain energy to it that could end up in a film could end up in television could end up in a video game or something like that and that that sort of genre that category of music there that i've you know uh, i'm not the first to come up with this but i feel like that's a sort of unique term and, and name for that sort of category um it, it was inspired by you know myself and you know mainly in collaboration with iconic beats have had the opportunity to try and submit music to a couple of different sync opportunities um you know nba 2k madden um those sorts of franchises where they're always looking for new emerging talent to submit music to you know feature in their game or feature in their film or something that's kind of where that was inspired because it always comes with some kind of brief where it's like um this needs to suit a chase scene or this needs to suit um you know uh uh the atmosphere for a shooting game or something like that and so that's where I get a little bit more in the experimental creative bag or a little bit more intentional with the sort of songs that we're trying to write. So more than a game itself 
it's it's definitely like you know it's got those horns and we're rapping about you know being number one or being underrated and being an underdog and that that sort of thing i always think about the film like rocky or creed um you know and and how would i write a song that would fit one of those matches in that movie or fit the climax of that film um so that's what shooting score is so we've got rent free and shoot and score as the two main categories and every month i'm trying to drop one of each song so i've got two songs dropping every single month and in january we've got both of those songs scheduled proud of me and more than a game and they're at least like i think one week or two weeks apart so they get at least two weeks each to to shine on their own um, but throughout the entire year, I'm going to be promoting my entire catalog that exists from January 1st onwards, right? Um, so every song that I've ever put out, I'm going to be promoting that throughout the entire year, as well as new singles, like in addition to new singles. Um, so the, the new singles are obviously going to be the primary focus, and I have to figure out how to find that balance. But the idea behind promoting the catalog is that I'm consistently in your face all the time i'm consistently flooding your news feed or your post like everything that you see on your timeline i'm, I'm gonna be there every single day um and then anytime that i promote the new music it's it's just gonna be like you know a more focused effort um so yeah that's kind of what's been going on i've had some recording sessions with um uh, Levi and Tehan the past week um, me and Chad are trying to work on a song that we can get out in December like late December just as a sort of interlude to um, sorry I gotta I gotta stop calling him Chad uh, me and uh, Sonny and me and Sonny Malone um, which is a dope name has got a whole story behind it um, if you guys aren't following Sonny Malone make sure you check him out um, me and Sonny Malone linked up last week too to uh, finish a beat for a song that we're hoping to drop in late December you know after between the Christmas and New Year's period just to serve as sort of a wrap up of like this past phase and an interlude to the next phase you know what we're what we're looking forward to in the next year um and yeah everything that i'm building with like levi and tahan you know we um oh, i forgot to mention we've got one song already planned for shoot and score in um february but we are trying to finish up you know, one of our main priorities is finishing up another rent free joint for the start of February. So then we'll be like, we'll be two months ahead um, and I can start planning content around that. Um, but yeah, I know these sounds like these sound like big plans. Again, we're, we're trying to get into that space of leading with without expectations and we don't really have expectations. We just have goals and we just have uh, aims, objectives, things that we're trying to achieve. But um, you know whatever happens happens i'm in a really good space now especially now that that tour stuff is out of the way and i don't have to worry about that don't have to think about that i'm just trying to stick to what my capacity allows and what my capacity allows at this point is obviously working and trying to collect my paycheck trying to you know do the best job that i can to keep that job um and, and try and excel at it because I do love the work that I'm doing with Multicultural Arts uh, Victoria. Um, so that's the main, uh, that's, that's kind of the main thing. Actually, the main thing for me is, you know, being able to show up for my family, right? Um, I spent a lot of the early years, like, you know, just making excuses to my partner about why she needs to be more of a, um, you know, she needs to hold down the fort more so that I can really dive into this music thing and make it work. And that was, you know, obviously 10 years later, where are we? We're still, we still haven't made much of a dent, but that was because I was, you know, spreading myself thin, saying yes to everything, but none of it was really serving what my purpose is. And I figured out what my purpose is and how I can do that by just doing what I'm doing. So showing up for my family, showing up for my kids, showing up for my partner, doing the best that I can at my nine to five job at Multicultural Arts Victoria and then creating the music that I love to create and just doing everything that I can to create from it. What I'm not going to be doing in the next year or so um, 
is I'm going to be very intentional with the shows that I choose to perform at. People reach out to me, I'll consider performing at it, but it's not a main priority anymore. I'm not trying to jump at every single opportunity to get on stage. Don't get me wrong, I love jumping on stage, but the benefits from jumping on stage compared to, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for me right now. Um, so, I... At the moment, I've got one show booked, and that's in February. I'm going to be performing at Waitangi Day in Werribee, so that's cool. Um, but it's not a main focus for me right now. Um, not that that show. Like any show that I sign up to is is definitely a main focus. I almost got in trouble. <laughs> almost got myself in trouble there with the promoters. Um, but yes, I'm going to be pouring my energy into that show when it comes around. But I'm not actively looking to book myself or get myself booked at different shows and festivals because I just I, I don't need that right now. It's, it's not gonna it's not gonna help. Um, my main focus is in establishing my name and establishing my brand um, within the community within and, and building building my own community. I've already I've I've talked about this in previous episodes. We're trying to build a community of like-minded individuals and bring people together through this music. All right, so I need to focus on creating the music that's going to bring us together. So focusing on the music, being consistent with the releases and building up catalog. That's the focus. All right, so every single week I'm trying to either write something new, finish up something, um, work with work with the team and work with my collaborators on finishing music and getting it ready for release. Um, and then just building up the catalog over the next 12 months. Um, and yeah, I know that was a that was a lot. I kind of I didn't plan this. I never plan this. I just brain dump. I give you my analytics and then I just talk about what's happening in life. Um, what else is there? I mean, while we're here, I feel like this is you know we, we've been doing a bunch of short episodes now, so I've been trying to I'm trying to like you know give you guys some more value in in, in this one. Um, so at work at Multicultural Arts Victoria, you know, for those of you who don't know what I do. I am the brokerage coordinator for the program that we call the Cultural Agency. So Multicultural Arts Victoria is an arts organization. We're a non-for-profit. We do a bunch of work with communities and specifically migrant communities and artists of Cald and BIPOC, you know, backgrounds. Um, and the Cultural Agency sits under Multicultural Arts Victoria and we do auspice servicing and brokerage. Now, auspice is is a whole other thing that I don't really manage, but that's for people who are looking to get grants but need an organization to kind of, you know, be their proxy, if that makes sense. The brokerage service that, that I run, so we always get inquiries all the time from different, like, clients and things like that, organizations, councils, who are like, hey, we've got this event happening uh, next year in Harmony Week. Um, we would really like a Bollywood dance troupe or an acoustic Pacific Islander guitar player or, um, you know, a Kapahaka group or something like that. They're always looking for different groups who could perform or be a part of it. We also we also do things for uh, dance dance groups. Uh, it's, it's not just for dance groups, dancers or, you know, singers and things like that. It's not just for music and dance, but there's also like people that are looking for visual artists to do murals and things like that. So anyway, that's what we do in a nutshell. But since I've been there, I've been there for about a year now. Um, I've, one of my aims has been to try and figure out how we can establish an online presence with a uh, community so that they know that we exist. Because while, while it's cool that we get to connect clients with artists, we want to be artists first. We, we want to be able to advocate for artists first. And it's so important to us to make sure that they're safe and that we can, you know, somewhat amplify their voice um so yeah it's cool that we get them paid gigs and we make sure they're paid fairly we you know pay super and things like that but something else that would be cool is if you know how can we how can we do more for the artists in our community so one thing that i've been playing with is uh this idea to do a podcast um and what I mean by that is a, is a cultural agency podcast and it's something that I still haven't pitched yet, but I'm going to pitch it to you guys. So I've been coming up with this idea because cultural agency and the reason why it's called the cultural agency is because it's all about taking agency and ownership in the cultures that make you who you are and the cultures that are a part of your heritage. And 
standing firm in that and being comfortable in saying that and and we want to amplify what makes you you what cultures are part of your genetic makeup uh, so a podcast setting would be perfect for that because then that's a way that not only can we establish ourselves online and you know let people oh sorry i gotta go pick up my daughter soon um not only can we um establish a presence and promote what we're doing with the cultural agency increase more awareness about the service so that people want to be a part of it people sign up to our artist database and we get clients and things like that but we have an opportunity to bring in these artists that we're talking about you know because we don't currently we don't get too many um let me be careful with my words here because currently um you know we're not super busy we have a bunch of different projects and pans in the fire that you know we're trying to trying to work with different organizations and a couple of events happening but we have space to be more frequent with the artists that we engage and talk to more artists it would be great to do a weekly episode of this podcast where we get to talk to a new artist and shine a spotlight on them and talk to them about what multiculturalism means to them talk to them about their experiences within the industry talk to them about their experiences with clients whether that's good or bad and what they would like to see a uh, live music or live create or just a creative scene in general look like in the future in the near future um, so that's another thing that I'm working on. I'm going to wrap this up there. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about everything that I've said, whether that's talking about next year and the plans for 2025 when it comes to music or whether that's to do with the podcast that I just shared. Or even if you just want to, you know, share your thoughts on the analytics so far and how the rollout has, has seemed to you. I'd love to get some outside perspective on how everything looks to you, um, what you, what you think about my whole process here. Um, and how you would go about changing it up um, if, if you feel like sharing that sort of stuff. Otherwise, um, if you like this episode, please like. If you didn't like it, smash the dislike. Just interact with the damn video. Stop not interacting. And if you want to leave a comment and you've watched this far, I want you to go ahead and comment iPad. Um, comment iPad below so that I know that you guys got to the 27 minute mark. Um, and if you don't comment that, then I know that you just, uh, you don't care about my retention rate and you want to see my YouTube channel fail. But if you don't want to see my YouTube channel fail, please subscribe because we are nine subscribers away from 500. Again, go to the start of the video. We're trying to monetize, trying to get a golden play button. Um, but yes, once again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Really appreciate it. And remember, together, we move.